Hello lovely people, this week I am here with a video I haven't done in a while, and that's a book haul. The last time I did a book haul was mid-August, and I have acquired a fair few books since then, so I thought I would just go through them all. Side note, I'm very sorry if you could hear my washing machine. I can't do anything about it, it's quite loud. I think I'm going to start with actually the most recent of these that I got, but that's just because um, I went to Paris recently. If you follow me on social media, you will know that. Links below if you would like to follow me on social media. But um, I obviously did a little bit of book buying in Paris. So the hotel I was staying in was literally directly opposite the Abbey Bookshop, which is a really lovely, I think it's all secondhand, I'm not entirely sure, but um, it's like a little, like a little trail. Like it's so densely packed. If you're claustrophobic, don't go because you have to like shimmy yourself around. But I wanted to pick up something that was kind of French, but I can't read French, so French in translation. So I went for Charles Perrault, The Complete Fairy Tales, uh, translated by Christopher Betts, because these are those really classic fairy tales that we know, um, this is the French originals of them, um, and I just thought it would be, I like fairy tales, as you're going to see from a couple of other things that are going to pop up in this haul, but this seems like a nice like French themed sort of thing to read. Um, the next book <laughs> sort of threw the French theme out of the window because we were also really close to Shakespeare and Company, which is a very famous bookshop. And I was like, well, I have to buy something from Shakespeare and Company, obviously. And they had loads of really lovely editions of things. So I went for something that is not French at all. I went for Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen because I really love this cover. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And usually I tend to not bother spending too much not bother spending more money on a prettier cover like just on a whim because I'm not sure if I'm going to like the book whereas I know and I've read enough Jane Austen by now to think that I'm going to like it so this is just gorgeous it's got a lovely little thing on the back it has deckled edges which I know not everyone is a fan of but I don't mind and now it has the little Shakespeare and Company stamp in it um, and so this one I have watched the film of this so I do know that this is about two sisters, presumably the sense of the sensibility. Like with Pride and Prejudice, it's like, oh, one has pride, one has prejudice, here we go. And then sort of like typical Jane Austen, like the, the like machinations, their relationship, their relationship with other people, that sort of thing. So um, I'm really excited for that. I thought it was lovely. Um, and then the final book I picked up when I was in Paris, um, I got this from the Musée d'Orsay, and it's just a Mucha book. Um, largely it is postcards of his work, but it does also have a literal sort of like bio thing there, which is why I'm including it in this haul. But I absolutely love Mucha. My favourite bit of the Musée d'Orsay was the Art Nouveau section, because that's one of my favourite periods of art. I just absolutely adore it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I want to frame some of these postcards, I want to get like a triptych and then like pick my three favourite and like frame it um, because all the paintings in my bedroom are sort of like, um, me and my boyfriend sort of share the a number of paintings that are hung up in our house, in our flat sorry, but um, in the bedroom it sort of like happens to just be all of mine like and there's a theme of like beautiful women in art sort of so um, I think I'm going to add the triptych there and then just quickly a non-book, I also got these really cute socks that are like Monet socks from the Musée d'Orsay as well because I couldn't resist! <laughs> um, next I'm going to move on to some books which I got from book boxes. Um, I get the queer book box every month and actually annoyingly I'm filming this before the November one has arrived so I gonna have to save that for another haul another time but I have three months worth of queer book box books to share so you know that just shows how long it's been since I filmed a haul. Um, so this was the August book, it's Trumpet by Jackie Kay. I've read some of Jackie Kay's short stories and I really like them so I'm really excited about this. I'm going to read you the blurb ever so quickly. The death of legendary jazz trumpeteer Joss Moody exposes an extraordinary secret unknown to all but his wife Millie. The discovery is most devastating for their adopted son Coleman, whose bewildered fury brings the press to the doorstep and sends the grieving mother to a sanctuary of a remote Scottish village. Um, I'm really excited about this because I have heard really good things about Trumpet. That is all I know about it. I don't actually know a lot about what it is dealing with. But the Queer Book Box has actually not let me down yet. So, very excited about this one. Um, then the September book was Maggie and Me by Damien Barr. And it's sort of, this is like a, a memoir about him growing up. And he was like weirdly fascinated with Margaret Thatcher. And Margaret Thatcher is obviously a very contentious figure, personally not a fan. Um, but especially with stuff like Section 28, la la la. 
So um, I think this is going to be really interesting just to see like one kid's memoir of growing up gay during this time having a slight fascination with Margaret Thatcher. I don't know anything more than that, but it's going to be interesting to sort of see what it turns out to be like, I think. Um, and then October's, oh god, months, <laughs> October's Queer Book Box was a book in translation. That is Crimson by Niviat Corneliusum. Um, I've never heard of this. I'm very excited. Um, it's set in Greenland with five friends. Thea breaks up with her long-term boyfriend for Sarah, but Sarah is in love with Ivik, who is about to break promises. Ivik struggles with gender dysphoria, and Inuk is caught in a scandal involving social media sex and betrayal. Behind the scenes is Arnax, the life of the party, who brings a web of manipulations to a crescendo. So it's quite a small book. I'm very intrigued about how these five interweaving plot lines are going to play out, bearing in mind it's not super long. Um, and I've never read anything about by this person, so I'm actually quite intrigued by this, and we're just sort of going to see what it's like. I also got my first ever Books That Matter box, because it had a Greek mythology theme, um, and I got Thirsty by Madeline Miller. I have already read this. In some ways I was a little disappointed because I was like, oh, but I've already read this. But in other ways I was thrilled, because I didn't own it because I borrowed it. So um, I'm sure you don't need me to tell you what Cersei is because it's been all over booktube, but it's all about Cersei, the um, figure from the Odyssey, and it's sort of like exploring her life and stuff like that by the same author who did The Song of Achilles. I loved it, so I'm very happy to finally own it. Moving on to other things. I got a book from work. <laughs> My branding is strong, because we get sent books to my work, and if you want them, you can take them home. Um, I didn't even have time to register that this book had come in and be like, oh, I would like to take that, I hope no one minds. Because my colleague like walked up the stairs and was like, Sophie, you like LGBT books, don't you? And then just handed me this book. And I was like, yes, yes I do, thank you, thank you. This is Nothing Ever Happens Here by Sarah Hager Holt. Um, as far as I'm aware, Sarah Hager Holt actually worked with Stonewall. I don't remember what capacity she was there in, but she was like an employee. She did a bunch of stuff. So like this bodes well. This is a book all about Izzy, whose dad comes out as a trans woman. And this sort of means that their family is put under a spotlight. So it's all about Izzy's journey through this moment of her life. Um, I'm interested to see what this is like. This comes out in January, 9th of January 2020. I actually don't think I'm probably going to be able to read it before it comes out because I have such a backlog of things to read. So I'm going to be interested to see what um, Own Voices reviewers think of this. And um, I like reading middle grade that explores identities within the LGBT plus spectrum because I think there's this idea sometimes that, well, not in my world, but... <laughs> Some people, they have this idea that LGBT plus identities are somehow adult and you can't deal with that with children, which is absolute nonsense. So I enjoy seeing people who do broach it in ways that children can take in and understand and stuff like that. So I am looking forward to seeing what this one's like. I just have such a backlog that I don't think I'm going to read it before it's officially published. Um, after that is a book I have mentioned previously before. Um, I mentioned this in my autumn TBR. That book is Anna of Cleve, Queen of Secrets by Alison Weir. Um, I actually don't think I'm going to read this in time for my autumn wrap-up, so I'm sort of just like mentioning it here, because I have now been to the talk that was the reason why I was going to read it, but I'm glad I didn't read it before the talk, because it was really interesting to hear Alison Weir talk about um, the sources and stuff that she's drawn upon, so this has generated some controversy, because um, it's all about Anna Cleves, and um, there's this idea being explored in this, that the reason that Henry... Um, divorced Anne was because um, he could tell that she had um, previously had a, had a child from her body and um, all of this stuff that's like bah which initially me and my friend who went to the talk were like hmm interesting don't know if I buy it it was very interesting at the talk to hear her talk about the types of sources that she was drawing upon and the the instances that are like mentioned and stuff that is what she has built around to do this narrative because she's not actually come out and said whether or not like that is what she's saying in this book but it is a topic that is explored in this book so that was really interesting and also um I quite, I've always quite liked Anne Cleve because she just sort of got to like have money go live in some fancy houses and all this stuff um but it was interesting to learn a little bit more about like her later life and stuff like this um and now that I've had the talk I'm looking forward to reading this a bit more than I think I was before I went to the talk I don't know but um 
I am excited to dive into it. It's just it is a bit hefty, so I think I might sit on the talk for a while before I like dive in fully. Um, a book which is kind of, might be cheating, but I'm including it in the haul anyway, is for my birthday. I went to stay with some friends a little bit after my birthday, and they gifted me Baking with Kim Joy. I love Kim Joy, she was my favourite in that season of Bake Off, and I think everything she creates is absolutely lovely. So my friends bought me this for my birthday, and I'm very excited to dive in and try some of her recipes, because they're really adorable things. I always feel like I'm quite a rustic baker. I, like, can make things that taste good, but they don't necessarily always look good. I just, like, bake rustically so it's going to be really interesting to try and challenge myself into doing some more like artsy things because I run a bake well I've been running a bake off at my work this year to raise money for charity and um because I work with a lot of designers a lot of that gets passed on to the cakes that they bake and they make these beautiful things and then I'm just like I made salted caramel brownies that taste great but are also a little bit rustic looking so I'm I'm intrigued to challenge myself with some baking. Another book which is a completely different topic is Honourable Friends question mark by Caroline Lucas. I don't know if you've noticed but the UK has been going through some political times recently. We still haven't had Brexit. It's still happening. Oh, what a time we're having. Um, I saw this in a charity shop and I thought, hey, this sounds interesting. So it's Caroline Lucas talking about her time in Parliament as, like, the only Green MP there. This was published in 2015, so not, like, the most contemporary up-to-date, but I am still interested to hear her perspective on. Apparently she's talking about stuff like from the NHS fracking and war on terror to climate change, corporate tax evasion and the sexism of page three. This is the story of five remarkable years in Westminster. So I'm, I'm just kind of quite interested to hear Caroline Lucas' perspective on her time in Westminster. So I think that's going to be quite interesting. And hopefully, even though it's a few years old, still be pertinent to all of the shenanigans we're happening. Finally, the final run of books I'm going to end on is at the end of August, um, I went to the Book Barnes Kilo sale. I've mentioned the Book Barnes Kilo sale before on this channel because I went to it when they did the May Bank Holiday one. And I also went to the August Bank Holiday one. So the next ones, um, I have quite a few, but that's because you pay by weight, not by book. And so I really took advantage of that. So I'm going to dive in with Rebecca's Tale by Sally Bowman. Um, this is based on Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, which is one of my favourite books because I just think it's so, depending on how you read it, it could be like a romance between like this woman and dealing with the shadow of her husband's first wife and stuff or a deeply sinister story where you can trust no one and spoiler alert I prefer the second reading um this I've heard a lot of things about this some mixed some really in praise of it so I'm interested to formulate my own opinion but Sally Bowman is responding to Rebecca and this takes place after the events of Rebecca have finished but exploring the figure of Rebecca herself and Rebecca in Rebecca, how many times can I say that word, is such a, a, a strong force. So I'm interested to see how Sally Bowman is going to interpret her. Um, and yes, I'm, I'm intrigued, suffice to say. Um, after that is Shadow Web by N.M. Brown. Um, as far as I'm aware, this is a middle grade, I believe, and it's about a girl who is trapped in London that looks as if it's from ages ago, but it's actually 2008. And then there is another version of herself who is in her own, her original timeline and is doing some terrible shenanigans and stuff. And so our main character, Jess, has to sort of engage with this game to like get her life back or something. Um, it says it's got a lot of twists and turns in it. It was on my Goodreads TBR from a few years ago, so I obviously must have watched someone else talk about this book and thought it sounded really intriguing. So um, I'm quite intrigued to see what it's like. I get the sense that it might be a bit steampunky, but I don't know where I'm getting that sense from, so don't hold me to that. Um, next up is some historical fiction, and that's The Scarlet Lion by Elizabeth Chadwick. So this is focusing on William Marshall, who I think is an interesting figure in many ways, a terrible man, particularly to, like, the Welsh. In other ways, quite an impressive human being. For example, at, like, 70 years old, he, like, led the siege on this castle and then, like, stormed the walls of the castle himself and broke the siege and stuff. So, like, in many ways, he was held up. And after he died, I think it was, like, the Archbishop of Canterbury who was, like, he, like, went on record and was, like, this guy was, like, the ultimate chivalric knight. But obviously, like, that just depends on your perspective and what viewpoint you're viewing him from. But he is an interesting figure, is what I am saying. So this is actually the second book in uh, that is looking at him by this author, but I gather that you can read them 
separately and also I know enough about his actual life to be able to fill in the blanks of what happened before this starts but it's looking at um, so this is looking at the period of time when Richard the Lionheart dies and then John becomes king and then William Marshall's experiences during that so I'm excited to sort of read some historical fiction set in this time because I actually haven't read a lot of historical fiction that is set in this particular moment so that's exciting um, to continue the history thread slightly I also picked up non-fiction She-Wolf by Helen Castor this is women who ruled England before Elizabeth to be honest with you four of my historical faves so it's looking at and it's looking at Matilda who was like cheated of her right to the English crown quite frankly because she was a woman and all the guys were like actually we'd rather have your cousin Stephen and she was like bitch why um Elmer of Aquitaine always a historical fave relevant to this time period um Isabella of France the she-wolf of France love her and then Margaret of Anjou and I think these are four really interesting female figures who I like already I've heard really good things about this I think it was turned into a documentary which I have seen clips of but not the whole thing so I'm just excited to I always like reading about cool women in history that's no exception to change tack again I also picked up How I Live Now by Meg Rossoff which is I think a YA book I've heard good things about Meg Rossoff this one as far as I can tell is about like a girl they turned it into a film and so most of what I know about it is based on a single watch of a trailer a few years ago but um she's like a teenager and she goes to live with these people in this other place and I think it might be a bit culty I don't really remember but my friend who I work with who is also writing a book has said that this book was really influential on the book that she is writing so I thought it would be interesting to read and then like get a perspective into that um after that is Soldier of the Mist by Jean Wolfe this is really intriguing for me um and my podcast did a collaborative episode of all about Jean Wolfe with another podcast called Alzbo Soup quite a few years ago now but Alzbo Soup are so excellent for if you're into Jean Wolfe at all and they actually mentioned this at the time um, it's set during ancient Greece and our main character he's had like a head wound so he can't remember anything so he has this like list of stuff that he always has to like run through to remind himself of what's happening but the, pri the other side of having the head wound is that he can see the Greek gods and like deities and nymphs and stuff like this so like um there's this really i think it's going to be so interesting like with gene wolf no, who is narrating it is always so key as to like are you receiving the truth are you receiving perspective like what is real that sort of thing there's always so much layers to his work that involve like a real like interrogation of what you are being told and i think given that to then have a narrator who is so obviously unreliable because he can't remember anything um i just think this is going to be so interesting throw in all the ancient greek stuff and i'm really excited to like try this and just see what it's like i am hyped i'm going to end on a run of three which are all fairy tale themed somehow which is what i mentioned earlier so first of all is household tales illustrated by mervyn peak these are um, just a selection of Brothers Grimm original fairy tales collated into one volume. I've actually read a collection of Brothers Grimm stories and um, this is like 46 tales or something and they're all illustrated so I thought that might be quite a nice way to sort of like get into it. Um, then we have this tiny little um, Giants and Dwarves. These are all stories which are to do with Giants and Dwarves. So it's stuff like for example um, Odysseus and the Cyclops, Jack the Giant Killer, Og Gog and Magog, those are ones which I'm already familiar with but there are a bunch in here which I'm not and also it had this really adorable little bookmark in it which is all Jenny Wren and everyone calls my granny Jenny and her nickname is Jenny Wren and so um this just seemed fitting so I took it home yes and then finally is a very similar little dinky collection um this is the willow tree and other stories which are some Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tales all collated into one tiny bo volume like the tinderbox and elder tree mother and stuff like that so again I have read some Hans Christian Andersen but not a lot so I thought this might just be a nice little dinky way of reading a little bit more. That's it. It's a mammoth haul but to be fair it has been being building since like the end of August so I don't feel too bad. Oh! I forgot to say I'm filming this before it's arrived because of timings in my own life but my friend Miriam who has the channel Between Lives and Life I will leave a link to her down below she's lovely she does these really great little like Miriam Talks About Things podcast it's really great um, but she's sending me a spare copy she has of Knight's House by Leah Bardugo which I'm really excited for so please imagine that I'm holding it I don't have the editing skills to put the cover in I don't know how you do that I just use Windows Movie Maker I'm sorry 
Um, but imagine it's here and I'm really hyped because I don't know if my video where I talk about series I don't know whether to continue has gone live or if that's next week but spoiler alert Dino Bardino goes on it because I really feel like me and her could get on but if only I find the right way in and the right way in I don't think with Shadow and Bone but it might be Ninth House I'm excited <laughs> that's it as for you have you read any of these do you have thoughts on any of them I'd love to hear them otherwise I will see you next week for something different <laughs>